The Dead Files, Season 15, Episode 6. Here we go. And this is Amy's replacement. Already I'm seeing a lot of editing. <clears throat> now with Amy, uh, I didn't really notice this type of editing. Wow. Whatever is here is trying to kill me. She wants me dead. Okay, so it, uh, the lady is calling the apparition ghost or whatever is she. Like, why do you call it a she? Because I feel like it's a female entity. I also feel like the devil has a hand in this. As okay, so already she said devil. Okay, I don't believe in a devil. I don't believe in a hell. The closest thing that. Uh, could resemble hell is earth <laughs> to be honest the place where human beings kill each other over paper money and land resources let us know that he was not gonna make it oh jeez. he had to learn how to do everything all yeah. over again i am so sorry to hear all right so her son was in an accident he had to relearn everything all over again what you guys are going through here things move on their own we hear startling noises. Our moods are being affected. Okay, so uh, things moving around in the house. Obviously, something is doing that to get their attention. It takes a lot of energy to physically move anything. Like this cup, just to move it across the table, it takes a lot of energy. Uh, these beings are not third dimensional. We are. In order for them to move anything in a third dimensional space, it takes a lot of energy. What else? Uh, let's see. We see shadow figures. Okay, shadow figures. Uh, these beings are trying to manifest themselves and your regular human eyes, that is all you can perceive. Okay. If there was a psychic medium with someone more sensitive, they'll perceive them as a different way as well. Physically violent. Okay. The way your moods are being influenced, what's going on with that? I'm in fear a lot. All entities require energy to act in our third dimensional space. One of those energies is fear. Fear gives off a particular vibration that they can feed off of and anger. Yes, so anger and fear, uh, they thrive off of. Um, whenever you feel the room getting colder, all of a sudden, they, it is them sucking energy, sucking the ions out of the air, it becomes colder. Uh, yeah, so it will affect your mood. If they are lower vibrational entities, they will suck you out and bring your energetic level lower. You become moody, sick. How's he being affected? Similar to you or different? Different. He's more agitated. He's more aggressive. He comes home angry. Yeah, so she is uh, being frightened and he is being agitated being the male uh, masculine energy sure so most men when they get afraid uh, it's a natural tendency to get mad and I understand the sentiment he has for this home yeah but his family needs to come first yeah, absolutely I'm looking around the house she had she does have red curtains but that is not enough <laughs> uh, I remember my bed was red, had red area rugs, and middle of the night I would wake up and I could see something standing, maybe 12 feet away, and that's the closest they could get to me. So that house is fairly large, so, um, no, a lot of room to operate. I'm concerned for the family, and I feel like the mom doesn't know what to do. All right. Cindy, okay, the new psychic medium that replaced Amy. Uh, I, I think I saw it somewhere. I think Cindy herself said she's more of clairsentient. Amy was more clairvoyant. 
Okay, so this is going to be interesting how they uh, translate the information that they receive. Yes. She said, I don't know how to help my family. I don't know how to save my family. I don't know. Okay, so already we see um, little figurines. Jesus Christ. Any human here. Shadow figures moving everywhere across the hall. This family is legitimately terrified about what's happening in their home. Yeah. So Claire Sentient, she is picking up a lot of emotions. Yes, that's already in that 10 second clip. She's already expressed herself more feelings as opposed to Amy, where I see this or I hear this. Yes. Terrified about what's happening in their home. This is not safe turf for me. It's dangerous. <laughs> if you are highly clairsentient, you, uh, of course, clear feelings. You get to feel the energy around you. Yeah, uh, you will feel what the entities are feeling, and you will feel uh, the living as well. So, depending on her, how she perceives perceives things. I don't know. It might be too much. Too much going on. It's just like when I have a bunch of spirits yelling at me. Uh, it, it's an overload. And I feel like I just I blow up and yell at them. So if she is bombarded with emotions, you know. It's you. Okay. Oh. I hate this house. <laughs> I hate this house. <laughs> It's not the house, it's the entity that reside in it. I hear what sounds like pebbles are getting thrown at my windows. So which windows are you hearing this? So ah, okay. It's not pebbles, okay, it is the taps. Okay, so um, whenever I would meditate, I would raise my vibration. Once I do that, spirits detect me and they come straight for me uh, because I am heavily uh, red oriented everything in my room is red so that's my protection red sits the lowest on the electromagnetic spectrum therefore it gives off the least amount of energy earthbound spirits require energy and they absorb it from their environment when they get close to red the red uh, energy level is low so they earthbound spirits cannot use that energy to manifest themselves or act upon a third dimensional space but back to what she was saying it sounds like rocks being thrown at the glass or the walls it's actually it sounds like this if you have a long fingernail and you strike it on the hard wood surface it sounds like this that's what it is uh, spirits will let you know that they are there trying to get your attention tuck, tuck. one two that's it but if a lot of them like say a hundred comes coming after you at one time you hear them tapping yes okay there's a lot of poltergeist activity in this house too i see objects flying around i feel like i'm in order for objects to be objects to be flying around that takes a lot of energy or a lot of entities Gathered up together. <sighs> yeah. Okay. How seriously would you rate the poltergeist activity here? If it's a scale of one to ten, I'd say we're at fifteen. <laughs> All right. It's the worst case scenario. Okay. She says fifteen. <clears throat> I think that's the scale of how, the scale of her sensitivity. What she senses what she collectively put together that's her scale because she is uh, clairsentient majorly clairsentient so she feels like it's a 15. Hm. What's going on? So I wake up with bruises and scratches. What kind of scratches are we talking about? I have a photo. How often is this happening? Wow. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, so all right, so they actually left a mark on her. Um, 
early when I was visited by the by the bad ones uh, is mostly sexual touching yes really abusive that's the kind of touching that I experience they will never break the skin okay or create bruises yeah. so there's a difference between how second dimensional spirits interact and touch you compared to fourth dimensional spirits <coughs> fifth dimensional and higher they're they're good guys don't worry about them if they touch you it's just to get your attention give you verifications on things yeah it's very painful so it's tender to the touch yes i mean is it possible in the middle of the night your husband banged into you rolling over or something <laughs> smack <laughs> Okay, so you're not even sleeping with him? No. Anything else like that happen? Any kind of other physical things? I was walking down the stairs and I got shoved. All right, so back to grandparents not sleeping in the same bedroom. <clears throat> My grandfather was clairaudient and his purpose on earth were to cross over spirits. He was visited nightly uh, by spirits and he would this is how he would play it off. Oh, he would get up in the middle of the night, go to the bathroom, do his prayers, cross him over, and go back to bed. But on some occasions, he was visited by not very good spirits. Those were the ones that made him violent, and he used to kick and punch and yell in his sleep. And my grandma would see that because my grandma was fully aware of what my grandpa was or his abilities were. She would just get up and go in the other room and sleep. Every now and then, we would catch Grandma in the other room. Like, what? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. So. You get hurt. I went to urgent care. Can you actually show me how hard you got shoved? Yes. Okay. Let's talk about what she said. Demons. Demons is a human word, or more like religious text word, that everyone has adopted. Movies has has used it portrayed it and now it is used to um, describe monsters from hell my understanding is this okay so um, i have seen them i have seen them in our physical space and i've also seen them in my mind's eye uh, they can come to you if they can float on in or if they can't reach you they'll uh, they'll infiltrate your dreams and that's when you have bloody nightmares Yeah, okay. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night. I know it was them I close my eyes again, and I can see them. Yeah, they reveal themselves Well, let's go back to the word demon demon or those type of entities it resides in a denser dimension and I have come up with second dimensional okay, so uh, I talked to my spirit guys. They didn't know how to take it like demons. Okay, so that's a human word. Spirits don't call each other demons. Uh, they are the second dimension or second dimensional beings. Right? And there's different types of spirits that reside in the second dimension. This is what I gather with the information that I uh, acquired. They're lower dimensional, denser, demons. Humans call them demons that reside in the second dimension. Now, there are other types of entities that reside in the second dimension. Whenever there is a fourth dimensional entity, spirit, confused earthbound spirit that doesn't know what, what's going on. Okay, so these are the ones that you see haunting places. They're, they're, they're doing what they used to do when they were living. They're not sure what to do. Okay, so if a person like me or my grandfather would try to... Uh, cross them over to the fifth dimension where they become healed souls uh, um, for, for for example a, this one entity is just like oh, I don't believe you that's wrong and they turn their back on unconditional love the fifth dimension that I have been constantly pushing is the fifth dimension in the fifth dimension is all about unconditional love okay you let go of the physical world you forgive everything you forgive your enemies and you and you ascend and you go to the fifth dimension if that fourth dimensional entity does not accept unconditional love they will go to the second dimension because the third dimension is earth 
okay the physical world the second is much denser that's where the demons are and that's where um, freshly freshly turned second dimensional entities reside those new ones can be switched over to the fifth but it's going to take a long time i've actually done changed uh the second dimensional to fifth dimension it took a long time but it works it can be done but it just takes a while okay so oh. if you're standing here and this woman comes behind you it's like immediately you just feel rage <laughs> all right so let's let's dive deeper into that everyone out there has a particular friend or acquaintance that everyone tries to avoid why because you know if you invite this person to your outing or meetups whatever something bad is going to happen negativity follows that person and that negativity pretty much is like it spreads it's like a disease they come to your table or party or whatever and all of a sudden bad things happen everyone starts to get punchy drunk belligerent yes so I I know a few guys. You invite them out, pro there'll probably be a be a fight. Yes. Covers off people, pulls their legs. She's really really angry. Super mean. She's a pissed off lady. <laughs> okay. All right. You seem pretty mellow to me. Is that your personality? No. I really feel that's from an outside in source, man. It's a, we weren't always like that. Okay. Um, I'm wondering about him. Okay, so near-death experiences can trigger people's abilities. When I was triggered, all of a sudden, all the spirits want to hang out with me. <laughs> so, I think you know where I'm trying to get at. You know, you never know. Okay, so that's a possibility. Because the living, they're getting depressed. It's going to get a lot worse if things don't change. All right, hold up. That last bedroom had a lot of red material. Yes. In fact, let's go back. Everything about this room feels off. <sighs> what is going on? There's a dead man here who committed... All right, so I'm guessing this is his... This is the son's bedroom. Red... Red sheets, perfect. Um... He should add more red to the walls, maybe paint the walls red. Uh, he'll feel better, have red lights, sure. Uh, so these are my protections, I use them. Uh, they, they, it keeps them from touching me. The red light uh, stops their telepathy so they can hardly communicate with me. Yeah. So I'm highly clear audience. And even though they're outside of the house, I can still hear them. <laughs> By using red lights on the outside, it pushes them out further, and all of a sudden, I don't hear anything. So, uh, these are the things that I work uh, work on because I'm also claircognizant, and I work on things constantly uh, because I get these ideas and do on how to keep them away. Yes, affecting the marriage. Now, what about experiences that you've had? Can you tell me about? Yeah, I woke up one night being choked. Did it feel like hands around you? All right, so. Uh, me being choked? No, I don't think, I don't recall them ever choking me. But there's so many ways that they can mess with you by touching you. It doesn't have to be chokes. Uh, my grandma used to suffer from being choked a lot. She slept next to my grandfather. And all the spirits went to visit him at night. So one of them might be like, hey, look, who's that? Yeah. Our I came to the mesquite tree. I was doing my prayer. And the minute I started my, my prayer, it sounded like, a thousand birds took off. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I used to have visions of birds taking off, <clears throat> or more like uh, I'll, I'll be walking next to this tree, and all you see is black in the tree, and all the birds would be chirping. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Your wife thinks there's a demon here. What do you think is here? Just evil spirits. All right. Spirits with bad intentions. Uh. That possession yet, but it's almost there. 
I'm 100% sure that we're dealing with something demonic. All right. No, um, I just hate when they overuse the term demon or demonic. Uh, ask anyone, what's a demon? I can't give you an accurate description or a definition because they're just copying what they heard or what they saw on TV. Okay. There's certain energy rotating around the out, outer perimeter. Okay. Uh, with, I would automatically say, okay, put red lights outside, shine it uh, yeah, around the area. Yeah, it'll bring the vibrational energy down. Uh, is that a permanent fix? No. But uh, uh, that's something I would look into. Because it has helped me with my... Um, with my nightmares yeah so I had to actually cut back on the red lights on the outdoors only on certain parts of the building uh, I have to leave a p partial opening for the spirits that want to cross over yes but the bad ones no I don't want them around no so red lights for me helps outside yes so if if the, if the spiritual energy is high in that particular area and you don't want them coming close to you put up lights shining into your, uh, up towards your house and the red light will carry outwards and it'll create more space between you and whatever entity that has bad intentions yes experiencing is intense poltergeist activity so on a scale from one to ten i feel like this house is a 15. <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, I think that's overboard, but sure. Okay, let's go with it. Fifteen. Slammed right into me from the inside out. Is this all poltergeist stuff or poltergeist activity? Okay. And it's really in. <sighs> well, I better look up poltergeist activity. <laughs> what is the poltergeist? Okay. Refrigerator open and food falling out. I saw things flying around. What you're experiencing is intense poltergeist activity. Okay. Okay, to make things more complicated for everyone out there, they've added the word poltergeist. Okay, so poltergeist is basically a spirit that does physical disturbances. That's it. I just call them earthbound spirits. Okay, so all this, ter this terminology that human beings have made, if your religious texts have created, okay, everything is still spirits. Spirits that reside in different dimensions, okay. That's, that's all it is. Uh, human beings just throw a name on them and it confuses people. If you break it down by dimension and the type of entities that exist in each, then you can understand their limitations and their skill sets. What are they capable of doing? Yeah. So on a scale from 1 to 10, I feel like this house is a 15. 15 is a bit much. Uh, I don't... Uh, Dishes, pebbles, door, frigid door opening. To me, that's not too bad. But then again, there was forceful pushing, and she's being scratched, bruised up. Yeah. Because he lost his home. It seems like every time I think I'm going forward, I end up going backwards financially, and I can't figure out why. Okay. Uh, okay. So, I'm gonna say this is a fourth dimensional entity that. Uh, jealous okay uh, vengeful if I can't be happy neither can you <laughs> okay. she pulled through he's a good good hearted kid mm -hmm. and he's also very open yes that makes sense makes <laughs> open <laughs> open for attacks oh man that I'm most worried about it's a woman. She's very present. She's very dangerous, and she's very focused on the woman mouse. Yeah. So, female spirit is after the female human. One of the biggest things that she can do is uh, she can make people fight. Oh yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden, you'll just feel vicious rage. We don't. Yeah. So I mentioned this already. <sighs> We all have acquaintances. When they are around, bad things happen. And it's to the point where we know it's that person. Just don't call him anymore. Yeah. So, Cindy, could this dead woman do anything else besides make them fight? 
Yeah, I mean, she can get really physical. She's pushing people, she's pulling. Yeah, okay, so we've seen earlier uh, the bruises, the scratches. I've never f uh, dealt with that before, but uh, I've known people who have. Hair, she pulls the covers off people, pulls their legs, and I had a sketch done of what I saw. All right, let's see the sketch. Mm -hmm. You did say you don't like sleeping in there, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, no, I've, I've never had anything grab my leg, try to pull me out, but uh, I've had like uh, child spirits trying to wake me up, touch my legs. Um, I had my spiritual guys shock me just to get me out of my nightmares. You know, shock, touch my leg, shock the hell out of me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, there was a bunch of other sexual touching going on, which I don't like. I don't think anybody likes that. Yeah. Please tell me we're done. No, unfortunately, there is more. <laughs> uh, are we done? No. <laughs> there is definitely some sort of inhuman demonic force in this house. Second dimensional was never a human, it's just a spirit. Never a human. Upstairs, I went into the girls' room. Okay, so that room is the granddaughter's, granddaughter's room. room. They Dreams, innocence. They come visit here a lot. Unfortunately, I feel like it has its sight set on one of the girls. Yeah. So easy to take control of. It's, yeah. Yeah, it does. It does? Yes. Sometimes I'll look at her and I swear she's looking right through me. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's so spooky. Tim. Hey, what are you looking at? <laughs> In something else. There's a little girl. Little girl? You should never be like that, right? No. No. I'm terrified. I'm very terrified. I mean, you know, if if you thrive on fear and anger, uh, you know, it's, it's, the children are so easy because parents will say, "Oh, you're just you're just imagining things." The question: Is there any way to fight back against all of this, or is it time to do what Cynthia's wanted all along, move out and make a fresh start? Okay, um, you might move, have a fresh start, but does that mean that the spirits will stay at the house or they will, will they follow you for more energy? Uh -huh. Get out of this house. It's not safe for your family to stay here. I knew it was coming. Okay, I will give it, okay. You, okay, so several things you can do. Find a reputable uh, group of people who can cross over the spirits, not just cleanse, not just force them out. You cross them over so they don't bother anyone else or they won't follow you around. Constantly try get them to cross over. And for the icing on the cake, cherry on the top, use more red decor. Uh, again, the energetic level is so low that these those apparitions and any other apparitions or spirits that come by They will not be able to interact with the red surroundings That's just my take on it uh, There's going to be others with their own takes, but you know um, Everyone has their own truth and this is mine well Okay, so what about their granddaughter that's being targeted by this demon? I don't think that the kids are safe here. Okay, um... Of course, okay. <laughs> but again, 
who's to say that these uh, beings, these entities, will not follow these people around? You don't know. Okay. For me, it doesn't matter where I'm at. <laughs> uh, I, I dread traveling anywhere and not being in a protected area. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Very grateful to everybody. Yeah, so I, I really like the way they use, uh, of course, the psychic medium's information. And the detective goes out and finds the real uh, aligning information. They are sending a priest out to bless our game. We have also contacted a shaman. And if there is no change, we will move forward in the sale of the world. <laughs> ah, okay, so when they were there, they were deathly afraid. Uh, as soon as the cameras left, it's like a medium left. Uh, hmm. <laughs> Change of heart. <sighs> well, I would decorate more red. <sighs> red lighting also. Yeah, so. But you need someone to uh, cross them over. Yes. Let them know what's really going on. You have to let go. You are now spirit. You are not bound by the, uh, the physical world. You are now spirit. You operate a different set of rules. Let go of the physical world. Okay. No one has ever talked to them that way, I'm assuming. Uh, you have to hear the, heal their soul. Let them know they need to cross over, become a fifth dimensional being. And if you need more assistance, I'll call forth your family members to, to coax you to convince you and take you to the fifth yeah so all right guys uh i'll see you on the next one take care